What's up, everyone? Happy Sunday. Uh, we are here live, coming from Atlanta. <clears throat> A couple announcements before I start. Uh, I'm going to be in London this week for the entire week. And any of you that are in London, uh, there might be a time where I can break free and we can meet up. So keep an eye on the community post here on YouTube to see. I'll, uh, I'll let you know by Tuesday or so uh, what, what day this week, but I'll be there the entire, entire week. And I'd love to meet some of you in person if possible. Uh, I have some uh, pretty excited about this. It's going to be a good uh, good trip. <clears throat> London, England. Uh, today's special is if you purchase a Beato book, 20% off, you also get the 100 page, 103 page PDF bundle, extra PDF bundle with it. So uh, Aaron will be posting in the uh, in the uh, or in the chat here, he'll be posting the link to that, but that's on my website right now. So 20% off and you get the Beato book and the 103 page um, PDF bundle that goes with it. That's um, uh, I call it the transcription bundle, but uh, it's um, you can also buy my record, by the way, it's 20% off everything in my, in my website. PDF bundle is all in tablature, by the way. For you guys that uh, that uh, can't read no can't read notation, you don't need to read notation really for the Beato book that well. Um, you really don't. Uh, it's only single notes for the most part. If you know the treble clef, we're actually going to uh, talk about this about <clears throat> learning position changes and how to play key changes in different positions. This is actually the best way to learn the neck, I think, is to go position by position and then play between two unrelated key centers to practice improvising. Because the, the pressure of improvising is what makes you, um, it is, is really what helps your brain sort these things out. Because what you have to do is you have to get to a point where you can think of ha ahead of where you're going. And I'll give you an example here. So I have a little vamp that I put together. It's between two chords that are a minor third related. Um, so I'm going to go from C minor seven to A minor seven or vice versa. It doesn't matter, but it starts in C minor seven. Okay. So C minor seven, and this is going to be, um, so this is if we're playing C Dorian, to A Dorian. Now, if we think about the two scales, one is from B flat major. Okay, C Dorian's from B flat major. The other's from G major. So we have to think, okay, how many common notes are there, first of all? Uh, well, if you think about B flat major has two flats in it, so B flat and E flat. So those notes are out. Uh, and G major has one sharp, which is F sharp. So, so you've got three notes that are... Um, uh, you've got three notes there that are definitely out of bounds. So, uh, but if we start the scale, let's say we start on the note C. I'm just going to go up the. Uh, I'm going to go up the C Dorian scale and talk about each note first. So, the note C is in A minor. Okay. The note D is in A minor. E flat is not. F is in uh, not in A Dorian. Okay. So, so you've got a couple of those are not. G is in both scales. A obviously is in A minor. B flat is not in A minor. Okay, so the notes that you can actually hold on between the two keys are C, D, G, and A. So C, D, G, A can. Those four notes will work on both chords. Let's play them in a different octave here. So I'm going to take a position, right? And I like to start in the middle of the guitar. Um, and I like to start in the middle of the guitar because essentially if you're here and if you can master this area, this area, and this area, those three areas, then you can master the guitar. Okay, you can master where the notes are. But if I take those notes again, so remember, C, D, um, 
Uh, C, D, G, and A. Okay, I'll go here. C, D, G, A. Wow, that sounds like something, doesn't it? That's really a D sus chord, right? So all those notes will work between the two chords. So let me play the vamp here. I just have a very simple pad with a with a keyboard bass and a simple drum groove to play over. That's what you want to do. It's better, always better to play over. It's always better to play over a some type of a beat because it will help you work on your time. I love sus chords. No, everyone loves sus chords. Five Watt World, everybody. That's my buddy Keith. If you don't subscribe to his channel, you should definitely subscribe to it. He's uh, he's getting a lot of subscribers these days. He's got some incredibly good videos. If you want to know about amplifiers or minimalist guitar playing, subscribe to his channel. So first of all, I'm going to start in this area, and I'm going to play those notes. So right there, I just played them. So I've got... A, G, D, C, right? A, G, D, C. So there, I'm going to start with all the notes that go between them. Okay, so we're going to go like this. That's a C minor 7. Here is... A minor seven, so I'm just gonna start with those. Okay, so when I do that, I played an E natural by mistake. Now, the E is not does not work, but when I play that, it's like, well, that doesn't sound that good. And one of the reasons that doesn't sound that good, if I just stick to those notes, is because some of those notes are tension notes against the chord, and out of context, they don't sound that good. So, next thing you have to do is learn what the notes are uh, in each scale in each position. So, I'm going to take C Dorian here, okay? I'm going to go C... That's C Dorian. I'm thinking B flat major. These are all the notes. Then I'm gonna, gonna go to A Dorian in the same position. One of the problems is we have a position change. Or you can do it like this. Depends on what feels comfortable for your for your hand. I like to go with close positions to start with. Because when you think about uh, position changes, it actually makes you uh, move, use more of the guitar. And you get out of hand position patterns, I think. I'm thinking. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start. Um, I'm going to start on this. Um, I'm going to start with the C Dorian. I'm just going to play eighth notes. I'm going to change when uh, when we get to that key change there. Okay, well, let me do this like this here. I'm going to show you kind of how to think about this key change. Here we go, C Dorian. Then...
Okay, now I've moved out of position there, really because I moved out of position. Okay, so I started to, to do some different things halfway through it. I started out really simply. So I'm playing, and then on the on the chord change, I would immediately shift to that new scale. So two, two, three, four. You can hear it right there. Um, so those notes that are different between those are, um, are ones that I'm going to actually lead into this time. I'm going to lead into them chromatically, either upward or downward. Okay. Either by scale tone, uh, from the A door into C, I'm going to use that or I'm going to go maybe lead down into that on the downbeat. So I'm going to anticipate the downbeat of the chords, okay? Let's go back to that. Here we go. Now. See that? Right there, I did. I led into that note B because that note is not in the C Dorian scale, okay? So right there, I was leading into the notes that are different between the scales and accentuating those because those are the, really the ones that are important. That note A is the same between both scales, but it's a, it's a really cool note on the C chord, but on the A minor chord, it's kind of a boring note. Okay, so that's not necessarily a great note. It's a great note to play on the C chord, but you want to go somewhere different on the A chord once you've given away because that's a really tense note. So watch, I'm going to use that note A on the C chord. Check it out. Hold on, I keep missing my downbeat here. I don't know why. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I see why because I have my locator's in the wrong spot. There we go. Save. Okay, here we go. Check it out. Two, three, four. There's an A. There's F sharp. That's not in either key. That's a six. Okay, now, so so that's that's how you lead the listener there using those notes. That's how you use some of those tension notes and um, and how you lead the listener. Let's take a different position now. Let's move up here into this area of the guitar, okay? Because this area of the guitar we have the uh, the two positions, G major and and uh, and B flat major. So uh, China Mike, what's up, man? Good to see you. I'm gonna be in London this week. Let's uh, let's uh, let's definitely get together. Okay, so um, so in this position, C Dorian here. If we go up to the eighth position, we have this. I'm getting all the available notes in that in that position. Well, to get the G major, I'm gonna to have to descend down. Okay. Uh, you can start to see where those notes, that note's different, that note's different between the two scales. That's in C Dorian.
Okay. Uh, let me play over it again. Here we go. So I'm gonna I'm up in the seventh and eighth position area. Two, three, four. Then I'm gonna go in. Whoops. Another thing you can do is to play just some repeated pattern. Check this out. Okay, so that's another, uh, that would be another technique there. I was kind of going off a little bit there. Sorry about that. Um, and then you can go to something like, um, then I would move up to the next position. The next position would be to go up to here in this area of the guitar. Now this area is gonna give me the same fingering that I'd have for A Dorian there, but go up to here to C Dorian. But essentially I'm playing a B flat major scale right here. If you think of the note B flat. And then I'm gonna have to go. Let's try it here, okay? You'll hear the key change. Two, three, four. So right there, I'm playing in that 10th position. Whoa, what just happened? I just did something really weird here. There we go. I hit some weird button I never hit before. Okay, so that kind of that covers that area. Now if we go back here to the first part of the guitar, so that when you get in that spot, you know where those notes are. So once again, it's learning these um, these two different 
uh, scale positions in each area. So for C Dorian down here, you have. If I think about C Dorian, so I'm going, I'm getting all the notes of B flat major. Jacob, this is the Ricky Digna the silly video on pop music. Well, guess guess what, Jacob? I don't care what you think about that. This is my channel with my name on it. Got it? So I can do videos on whatever I'd like. That's why it's called Everything Music. Um, that's okay. It's cool. It better be okay because your name's not on the channel. You can still always start your own, though. Just your opinion. You know, my son Dylan <laughs> thinks it's dumb when I when I do that, too. He's like, why are you doing a video on that song? <laughs> That's why his his uh, his reaction was, "Yeah, do you know that song? Yeah. Don't call me up. Why do I like that song? I have no idea. Like, uh, because you have no taste. <laughs> you do have a channel close to 2,000 videos. Okay, well, there you go, man. I didn't ban Hammer. I appreciate what you're saying. I really do appreciate what you're saying, Jacob. Um, but I don't agree with you. Um, I've made 650 videos on this channel, and um, I'm not going to make videos on the same thing all the time. I happen to like a lot of different kinds of music. And... One of the reasons that I know a lot about music, I'd like to think, is because I've got an incredibly open mind. So um, that is, um, I think that that's, that's uh, pretty much every musician that I know that's a really great player and great musician, great writer, is really open-minded and likes many different genres of music. People that are weak players usually have very limited tastes. So uh, the first time I got on the Metallica or the uh, Megadeth bus when I was um, when I was going up to meet Marty, they were listening to Britney Spears. Swear to God, first day he and Dave Ellison. I, no, it wasn't Britney Spears. It was something like that. It was pop. They had a pop station on Megadeth bus, right? Dave wasn't there though, but those guys were. Um, and uh, Marty's like, yeah, Marty liked pop music, Japanese pop music that had, uh, that had a lot of cool, um, it was like the Japanese version of Britney Spears. Uh, but it had, had more interesting, you know, major seventh chords and, 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 uh, um, uh, major nine chords and things like that, half diminished chords. So it was a little bit more sophisticated, but it was still pop music. Uh, so anyway, so that's why, um, Right there, I, w I wasn't surprised at all. I was not surprised at all. Uh, okay, so let's let's talk about this area of the guitar here. So, then I've got this is really easy because you get B flat major here, and then you get G major. So I'm just going to run the scales for a second and change when the chords change. Okay, so check it out. B flat major. G. Okay, so now I'm moving moving out of position. So once you do that, um, what I like to do is then maybe go between two strings. Okay, so I'll take the the let's say B and E string, and I'll play ideas from each key just on these two strings and force myself to stay on there. Okay, and uh, and improvise. So here we go.
It's tough. I'm really, really thinking hard here. So I'm playing a... Uh... There's my G major. E flat major. So let me try a lick like that where I'm doing uh, repetitive patterns like that. Three, four. Oh, I can't play that fast, no. Oh, what? Right there, I'm just practicing moving between the positions, okay? And just trying to work those scale fingerings out so I really know where I am. Now, when you start to improvise over that and play ideas, then, then once you learn the neck, then you start to think about, okay, what are the cool notes that I can play and how do I play motifs in this, right? So a motif like this. Uh -huh. So, so let's say I do that on this first one. So I played the uh, um. Then I did the same kind of idea. So let's listen what that sounds like that. Oh, I tried to do a little Eric Johnson there. Uh, maybe something like that. I don't know how I would transpose that lick to that. That would actually work. Let's try it. So right there, I'm, I'm thinking in real time and trying to transpose that lick to the next scale degree. That's original Cliffs of Dover lick.
You have to account for that C sh uh, uh, F sharp there. Then if I go up, up here. be hard to do but that's basically the idea of how you would do that to transpose those ideas like that whoo that uh that really hurts my hand a little bit um um let's see here 56k dial-up modem. I know why. Is my thing lagging or something? Um. So very hard to play that. Oh man. Um, okay, so one other thing I was going to talk about today. Um, I think about these. I know I go on a long time with the uh, with the live streaming now. Um, but um, has Halo Sport helped me? Not yet. Um, oh, so we get this special offer again. Aaron's putting it in, the, in, in here today. You get the Beato book for 20% off, and that comes with the transcription bundle, which is 103 pages. So that's uh, 461 and 103. That's like uh, 560 pages. Um, and by the way, I'm going to be in... in um, I'm going to be in London this week, starting on Tuesday. Any of you in London, keep an eye out on the um, keep keep an eye out on on uh, the community board here because I'll send out a message um, as to where I'm going to be if we're going to maybe meet or something. If anybody wants to get together and meet, that would be really really cool. So. Um, You don't want to sound annoying about... Oh, you're talking about the ear training course. Yes. I'm going to meet with Spitfire Audio. I'm going to go uh, see my friend Christian Henson. If you guys don't subscribe to his channel, you should definitely subscribe to Christian's channel. It's one of my favorite on YouTube. So uh, if, if you're going to subscribe to two channels, subscribe to Christian's channel. Subscribe to my friend Keith's channel. I just saw him up there, 5 Watt World. Those are great channels. Um, and buy the Beato book because it keeps um, keeps me in business here. And the guitar I'm playing here is a PRS 594. Um, okay, so actually, you know what? I'm not going to go into another thing because I don't want to confuse this whole I idea here. I want to stay with these two things. Um, anytime you have third related, I just want to say this. Anytime you have third related keys like that um, and you and you only have a few common notes between the keys, like in that case, between C Dorian and A Dorian, you only have three com uh, f uh, four common notes. You have uh, three common notes. Is it, uh... Yeah, three common notes. That's really how you learn your guitar neck because it, it forces you to, to think about what notes are different and how you play into the next chord change because that's really the key is you always need to be listen, uh, leading the listener. You need to do that as well as a writer. Now, most songs are diatonic songs, but as we saw from The Doors this week when I did the song Touch Me... Um, me, babe. Da, 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 da. 
Now that is just insane. That's how a pop song should be written right there. Okay? That's why you can get a great string arrangement, horn arrangement, is because you get it's not the same four chords all over again. It's not B minor uh, A E, maybe with an F sharp thrown in there, okay? So touch me, babe. Na, 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 there's your third related modulation. Da 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 I mean, that is unbelievable, right? Come on, give it up for the doors. Robbie Krieger. Anyways, you guys are the best. Um... Beato book. You can become a member of the Beato Club if you already have the Beato book and you have all the mugs with all the uh, you know where you where you can learn all your triads and and uh, seventh chords and and modal uh, modal scales. I've got mugs of the major scale, melodic minor, harmonic minor, double harmonic major, and harmonic major scales. Um. So that's all for now. You guys are the best. I'm uh, I'm out of here. I'll, like I said, I'll be in London as of Tuesday, and um, maybe we can find a time to meet up someplace. So um, I'm gonna get a dedicated email uh, so that people can email me. So email me on my Gmail. I think Aaron can set up Rick at, at RickBeato.com. Um, I think that would be really cool for if people want to. Um, want to uh, contact me through that. That might be an easier way. I realize I don't have an email. Unless I do have that, Aaron. Do I have that? I don't know. All right. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. Bye.